an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! So David Cameron has urged MPs from all sides to support his call for British airstrikes against IS targets in Syria as he cleared the parliamentary schedules for tomorrow's debate. Mr Cameron is likely to achieve a consensus, although tonight an influential cross-party committee accused him of failing to make an adequate case. Jeremy Corbyn has given Labour MPs a free vote but claimed all but a small number of diehards would vote against military action. We'll hear from him in a moment. First, here's our political editor, Gary Gibbon. Typhoons at RF Lossiemouth could be part of the additional forces sent to drop bombs on Syria. David Cameron has a majority to launch attacks on so-called Islamic State targets in Syria. The only question is how big. The cabinet safer. unanimously backed military strikes this morning. The government's tailored its motion to try to lure as many Labour MPs as possible to its side. This has been a very deliberate and proper process, a cabinet meeting, legal advice, a proper motion in front of the House of Commons, ten and a half hours debate uh, tomorrow in the House of Commons, and obviously we should think of our brave armed forces and their families uh, for the risks that they take on, on our behalf, uh, and that is uh, obviously preys very heavily on my mind. Why have you backed down? You Jeremy Corbyn yesterday abandoned his attempt to force his MPs to back his anti-war position. He was worried about resignations from his shadow cabinet. But today, Jeremy Corbyn described his front bench critics as diehards and warned them there'd be no hiding place for them if the war goes badly wrong. I'm saying to every MP, you make up your own mind. There's no hiding place behind a whipping arrangement or not. Your decision on behalf of your constituents whether or not we should commit British troops into yet another war in the Middle East with no end game in sight. One shadow cabinet minister responded, this exposes the leadership in their determination to undermine, intimidate and bully good Labour colleagues. Labour supporters of military attacks believe they have 50 MPs, just under a quarter of the Parliamentary Labour Party, certain to vote with them. Tonight, the Foreign Affairs Select Committee said it wasn't satisfied its questions about military action had been answered. Many voters seem to feel the same. If they get, if they get the people they're looking for, then it's fine. But uh, if they're going to kill innocent people in, in the bargain, then I don't think so. It's a bad thing because you're not sure if it's 100% ISIL. Obviously, they're in populated towns where there are civilians there. So if you bomb them, you're killing the civilians as well as ISIL. These ISIS people, they are just like mad dogs. They don't operate to any program, just sheer destruction. A French Mirage jet taking off from Jordan over the weekend to launch attacks on Syrian targets. Like the French government, the British government is ruling out ground troops, begging the question whose feet will be on the ground and just how much can be achieved. One minister said it was important to lower expectations ahead of any British military action in Syria. There could be some early successes in terms of hitting so-called Islamic State targets, but retaking Raqqa, for instance, the command and control centre of ISIL in Syria, was something that could easily be a year plus ahead. And when it happens, it could be Syrian regime forces that march down the street. In the Defence Soleil Committee, the government was grilled on who made up the 70,000 Syrian moderate rebel forces the Prime Minister said would help on the ground. Do you accept that a lot of people in the 70,000 would and should be categorised as Islamist? Um, I think you'd have to ask, you'd have to ask the uh, Joint Intelligence Committee for the detail. Well, I really don't see why that has to be a secret. And I really think that that, think that, that breakdown ought to be made public. And nobody's going to do that now, I take it. Well, we'll certainly, certainly uh, reflect on that. Stop the war are marching on Labour and Tory headquarters in London tonight. Numbers in the Commons suggest they won't stop this one. Gary Gibbon, well, earlier I went down to the Leader of the Opposition's offices in Westminster to talk to Jeremy Corbyn, and I asked him whether he thought he had let his supporters down by not imposing a three-line whip on his MPs in tomorrow's Syria vote. 
I don't believe I have let anyone down. My opposition to this war is well understood and I will be putting it tomorrow morning from dispatch box when I speak after the Prime Minister in this debate on Syria. We're having a free vote within the Labour Party. Every Labour MP will be able to make up their own mind and all the indications are that the majority are going to be opposed to the bombing because they are concerned. The Prime Minister hasn't made the case. They're concerned about this um, rather strangely worded phantom army that the Prime Minister seems to have found in Syria and they're concerned about that. So yes, there's going to be some Labour MPs, indeed some shadow cabinet members, who will put a different point of view. Is it the end of the world in a democracy when people speak openly and honestly about what they believe in? I think it's actually a strength. But, but a conviction politician, and that's what you are, if your conviction is that, uh, that, that that war would be wrong, then surely your duty, your principal duty as the leader of the Labour Party is to lead it into the division and whip the party through. That's the tradition. That's how politics I works in this country. I will speak tomorrow against this war. I will ask every Labour MP to join me in the same division lobby opposing this war. I understand some do not agree with my view. Some take a different view. I respect they have a different view. I think they're wrong. And I think they ought to listen very carefully to public opinion, listen to the uh, rather strange arguments made by the Prime Minister to support this particular war, and also put their real efforts into where it matters, but supporting own, a political settlement. Your foreign affairs spokesman, uh, Mr. Ben, is going to speak out in favour of supporting the Prime Minister in this matter. I mean, you, know, you can't have a situation like that, can you? We agreed to take a free vote so that every Labour MP can speak out on what they believe in. Uh, but, but how they vote is their decision. I mean, Listen, we're a in a political democracy. party is either a political party or it isn't. And if a political party is led by a man who has a principle and has the, the power to deliver a, 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 a whipped vote, and then his Foreign Affairs Secretary, Hillary Benn, uh, says, no, no, I, I'm now going to make a completely different speech. I believe the party well, says this. Actually, what are people to believe? No. Actually, where Hillary and I disagree is on the bombing. Where we agree is on refugees, is on cutting off funds and arms to yeah, ISIL. The issue is the bombing. The issue is the bombing. The issue of division is the bombing. That's why I'm against it. Will Hillary Benn retain his job? Hillary Benn uh, is the Shadow Foreign Secretary. He enjoys your confidence? We don't agree on Syria, we agree on a number of other things. Does he enjoy your confidence? He enjoys my confidence on a number of matters, not we don't agree on Syria, that's very obvious. Isn't war such a critical issue that it is a matter of confidence? We're going to be discussing this as the days go on. Tomorrow is an important day. Well, does that day. mean I'll his job is in question no, the days going on? No, it doesn't. You shouldn't draw any implications from that at all. What it means is that tomorrow we're in a different position. I had a discussion with him yesterday and we'll be having further discussions afterwards. You see, a lot of people within the party and beyond, observers too, are saying, look, the parties are shambles. I mean, the, these meetings you have of the Shadow Cabinet, the meetings you have of the Parliamentary Labour Party are a complete shambles. And I mean, even I have been called up by people who've attended those meetings and said, listen, this can't go on. Uh, you accept they are a shambles? No, they're not a shambles. What I did after election was what I promised to do was to reach out to appoint a Shadow Cabinet that was broadly a diversity of opinion and hope that those members would make a contribution and it would um, result in better policies. And we have forced the government on the back foot on tax credits, on police cuts, on human rights in Saudi Arabia. We have become a party that's fundamentally opposed to the economic strategy of this government. That didn't happen by accident. But, and something utterly central to your own campaign to becoming leader, that of opposition to these kind of operations, right? you're not prepared to stand firm and say that is a point beyond I'm which standing firm I do tomorrow and right. making a speech yeah. from the dispatch box yeah. of why but, I'm against war. But not war. with anyone else, and, uh, as far as one can see, in terms of the immediate people around you whose job it is to consider foreign affairs and whether Britain should be at war. Perhaps we get down the road much better by encouragement and persuasion than by instruction. Is there any consequence for those who vote against you tomorrow? Any? Can you guarantee that they won't be rolled out of Parliament as a result of this? It's not up to me to decide who are or not Labour candidates in the future, but the, any selection, reselection, deselection, any other kind of selection is at least three years away because there's got to be a boundary review first. And so I think what we should do is concentrate on the issue tomorrow, which is whether or not the British Parliament and all its members in all its parties 
um, decides whether or not they're going to support yet another war or they're going to support a process of political dialogue, humanitarian interventions and peace. Jeremy Corbyn, thank you for talking with us. Well, the Shadow Foreign Secretary, Hilary Benn, who's at odds with Mr Corbyn, uh, joins John now from Westminster. Actually, John. That's very nice of you, Kathy. <laughs> um, Mr Benn, do you, in, uh, do you in, or does Mr Corbyn enjoy full, your full confidence in him? Yes, he does. And as Jeremy has just pointed out, under his leadership, we forced the government to U-turn on the tax credit changes, not to cut police numbers any further. And he's achieved that by his patient, quiet, forensic, but really effective questioning of the Prime Minister at the dispatch box. But we do have a difference of view on the matter that will come before the House of Commons tomorrow, which is, for me, the threat to our national security, the safety of our citizens, that of other citizens around the world, given the threat, the real clear and present threat, that ISIL Daesh presents to us and many other people. But this is a, the most fundamental decision any politician ever has to to make, to go and kill people overseas uh, with bombs, whether they be civilians or, or because we're never going to know which, which we manage to kill. Um, and, and history tells us, right back to Suez, that people take a stand of principle on this. And people have resigned down the years when they've opposed what is being done in the name of the party they support. But you seem to be prepared to sort of straddle the fence. No, I wouldn't put it like that at all. Look, I've been very straight and honest about my views. I've been clear that having weighed this up, I've come to the conclusion that we should be playing our full part in taking the fight to ISIL Daesh in Syria, as we are doing in Iraq. And remember, John, what, just over 14 months ago, the House of Commons voted by an overwhelming margin for the RAF to engage in airstrikes in Iraq. And ISIL Daesh's forward march has been halted. They have been beaten back in some areas. Recently, the Kurdish forces, the Peshmerga, took Sinjar. And without air support, that might not have happened. But of course, it's an awesome decision that we face. And members of parliament need to consult their constituents, their party, the public, their consciences. But for me, this is a decision about keeping the British people safe. But it's also about saying this. Are we going to allow an organisation which has seized territory, that beheads aid workers, that crucifies people, that throws gay men off buildings, that enslaves women and sells them into mm. uh, sexual slavery, are we going to stand aside in Iraq and Syria and say, well, you get on with it? Or are we going to respond to the United Nations, which has passed unanimously a Security Council resolution, John, and I believe passionately in the United Nations. We helped as a party to found right. it at the end of the Second World War, and it has called on all the nations of the world who have the ability to do so, to use all necessary measures against right. ISIL Daesh and the threat they represent. And well, I think you know, we should respect that. But well, even the Foreign Affairs Committee itself says there are unanswered questions that the Prime Minister has failed to address. One of the questions people are going to ask is, you mentioned the Kurds just then. Who's killing the Kurds? The Turks. Who are our allies? The Turks. Are we really happy to be in alliance uh, with the Turks as they kill the very people who are making the greatest impact, far greater impact than the Americans, on ISIS on the ground? Well, as your question rightly points out, John, this is a very complex and bloody civil war that has killed over 200,000 people, that has led half the population of Syria to flee their homes. Four million have fled the country. What we are all agreed on is that ISIL Daesh represents a particular threat. Yeah, that's and, an and easy the... thing to say. That's a very easy thing to say. But it's far harder to defend the fact that some of our allies are killing the very people that are killing ISIS. But let me put it to you this way, too. It is speculated very strongly that if the Raqqa capital of ISIS is ever to be captured, it'll probably be taken by the ground troops of who? President Assad, because he has the most coherent force knocking around in Syria. Happy to back that too, are you? I want to see, John, an end to the Syrian civil war. The only way that is going to happen, as you well know, is for there to be a negotiated mm. settlement. The Vienna um, meetings have taken place twice now. There is the beginnings mm. of the outline of a peace process. I am really anxious that we get a ceasefire because the vast majority of people who have died in Syria have died at the hands of President Assad, who decided to respond to his people asking for more freedom and an end to people mm. being locked up and disappearing in prisons forever, never to be seen 
again. Right. I but want that to be brought to an end. Only diplomacy will do that. The question we face tomorrow in the House of Commons is this. If you agree, if you recognise the threat from ISIL or Daesh to the people living under its yoke, you've reported over the summer, John, the killing of the British tourists in Sousse in Tunisia, the downing of that Russian airliner, mm. the suicide bombs in Beirut yes, all, and all Ankara, that, yes. and the killings in Paris. Well, you say all that. That is why there is a threat, John. Indeed, 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 indeed. But uh, the rule of law and the whole defence of the way in which we perform is rooted in our democracy. And our democracy at the moment over this issue, is certainly as far as the Labour Party is concerned, is a complete shambles, as I suggested to the Labour Party leader. Do you still genuinely have total confidence in him? And in the end, is all this about nursing your own leadership uh, ambitions? It certainly is not that, and I do have total confidence in Jeremy. And I fundamentally disagree, John, with what you've just said about the Labour Party because Jeremy decided and I really welcome it that we would have a free vote why did he do that that takes strength and courage as a leader you know John because he recognizes that people have sincerely held views on either sides of this argument and do we not want a politics John in which parliamentarians weigh these things in a serious way respect the fact that others have a different view and then come to our decision and yes be held to account for that isn't that what our democracy is all about and that is what i will think we will see in the house of commons tomorrow and jeremy corbyn through his leadership has made that possible by saying we will have a free vote and i think that is a sign of his strength and absolutely not of any weakness hillary ben thank you very much for joining us thank you I've been getting away with it all my